Koe no Kitachi, also known as the Silent Voice, is a story about a young man's path to redemption as he battles the repercussions of his adolescent mistakes. I was never really susceptible to being bullied, nor do I have a disability, yet the story's narrative and well-developed main cast allowed for me to feel for and relate to each of the characters in my own way. Due to time constraints and the resulting plot changes, the movie was unable to fully explore much of the cast to the extent that the manga did. As a result, I feel the need to analyze Kawaii Miki, who is often reprimanded for her stagnation and overall lack of development. Bullying is defined as the use of superior strength or influence to intimidate someone, and while most everyone can agree that the children in Koe no Kitachi bullied Nishimiya, Kawaii consistently states that she was never a bully, and that if anything, Ishida's false accusations that said otherwise meant that she was bullied alongside Nishimiya. When most people try to list what exactly Kawaii did to be called a bully, they find themselves mentioning the scene where Kawaii intentionally tricked Nishimiya into singing early, only so that she could look good by telling her that she'd teach her the timing later on. But I don't believe this is necessarily an accurate representation, seeing as how it was an anime-only scene that was never shown in the manga. The only times the manga showed Kawaii bullying Nishimiya was whenever she agreed with those that complained about her, or whenever she laughed at jokes made about her. Yet none of this involved Kawaii using her superior influence as the class rep to intimidate anybody. On the contrary, there are actually times where Kawaii tattled on Ishida because he directly bullied Nishimiya. When comparing Kawaii's actions towards Nishimiya back in elementary school to the dictionary definition of bullying, they don't necessarily equate to her directly bullying Nishimiya in any way. However, as I stated in my Uno video, when a child's behavior is reinforced through the chuckles and acceptance of one's peers, then that behavior is seen as acceptable. Therefore, even though Kawaii never directly bullied Nishimiya back in elementary school, her role was that of an enabler as her laughter and participation in gossip helped to promote the bullying taking place around her. While this doesn't leave her without blame, it's difficult to judge someone based purely on how they handle the incidents that happened around them when they were a young child. Which is why the analysis of Kawaii's character was never really going to be over what happened when she was a kid, but rather her personality flaws that continue to show themselves throughout the series. In psychology, narcissism is seen as a personality type that is extremely selfish, often with a grandiose view of one's own talents and a craving for admiration. Now while most narcissists are overt and display large amounts of exhibitionism, there are also covert narcissists that, while much harder to spot, can be just as detrimental to the people around them. I'm no expert in psychology, so while Kawhi may not necessarily be a narcissist, her personality reveals many common traits with that of the covert narcissist. She displays a quiet smugness and sense of superiority as she not only thinks she's cute, but that she works harder than anybody else. She is self-absorbed, and as a result displays difficulty when it comes to listening to others, choosing to rather focus on what she wants to hear. Going hand in hand with her self-absorption is a lack of true empathy. This was put on display when Ishida wanted to confirm whether or not she'd mentioned his past to Mashiba, and Kawhi chose to disregard his worries, instead taking it as a personal insult that she can't stop running her mouth. She then goes on to state how uncool it is for Ishida to try to silence her. By taking Ishida's uneasiness and turning it into a public display centered around her, she not only bullies Ishida in a direct sense, but also displays a fourth trait of narcissism by showing how highly sensitive she is. She handles most types of criticism very poorly, and while that's not necessarily a narcissistic trait all on its own, the fact that she defends herself with an increased sense of superiority and dismissal as a result of her high sensitivity is. Adding on to this and her sense of superiority is the way she steadfastly views herself as the only one that didn't play a role in bullying Nishimiya. There's not much evidence to back this up, but I believe that by consistently lying to herself about her lack of involvement in the past, she eventually started to believe it. Even though she may have been the least direct, she still played a role in badmouthing Nishimiya behind her back along with the other girls. Yet despite this, she truly and honestly has herself convinced that she's not only innocent, but misunderstood as a result of everyone else's false accusations. I always found it ironic how the girl who most likely fabricated memories of the past within her own head and refused to face the truth was able to shake the confidence of others by accusing them of doing what she herself was guilty of. This leads us to the final trait of narcissism that Kawhi displays, her inability to genuinely connect with others. P. 
people with narcissistic tendencies have the ability to deeply damage the psyche of those close to them. They tend to be masters of manipulation and always make others feel like they're at fault while bearing no responsibility for themselves. They project their own negative feelings onto others and by making them feel bad, they themselves feel better. While all of this is simply a pretty general overview of a narcissist, does any of it sound familiar? Honestly, I think this seems to perfectly describe the girl known as Kawaii Miki, along with how her personality affects the people around her. So let's delve into a few of those relationships. Firstly, it's almost impossible to discuss Kawaii without bringing up Mashuba. I'm going to be brief when discussing their relationship because like I said in my previous video, I don't completely understand it too well and I hate talking out of my ass. Basically, she follows him around like a lost puppy, and it's his involvement with Ishida that ultimately involved Kawaii with the group to the extent that she was. She only becomes involved in filming the movie because Mashiba was, and often changes many of her standings in order to agree with him. She even chooses what college to attend based on where he wants to go. How others perceive her has always been important to Kawaii, but we see this to a much greater extent with Mashiba. Then there's her relationship with Ishida. I'm going to keep this one brief as well, because while I don't wish to discuss all of Kawhi's relationships, I feel it's at least important to mention that most of the acts of bullying Kawhi directly commits are targeted at Ishida. This along with his low self-esteem cause him to doubt his own memories as Kawhi projects her own negative feelings onto him. Honestly, if Kawhi didn't use Ishida's insecurities to gain Mashiba's sympathy by outing him in the middle of the classroom, Ishida may not have broken down and snapped on everyone at the bridge. And thus, without Kawaii damaging the psyches of those close to her, Koe no Kitachi would have been a completely different story altogether. As a result of Kawaii's toxic personality and how it's hurt Ishida numerous times, Ishida is disgusted by Kawaii to his very core. And last, but certainly not least, I feel the need to talk about Kawaii's relationship with Nishimiya. While Kawaii tends to talk to Nishimiya normally, Nishimiya is of course unable to understand her, leaving Sahara to translate what's being said. This contributes to what I perceive as part of Kawaii's self-absorption, as she never really seems to talk to Nishimiya with the intention of communication, but rather says what she does for her own sake. I said in my Uno video that Nishimiya tends to victimize slash blame herself far more than she should, but I was incorrect in using both of these contradictory words, despite how similar they may initially seem. In reality, Nishimiya blames herself and places little to no fault on others, while on the other side of the spectrum, Kawaii victimizes herself and places all of the blame on others. By using these two words interchangeably in that first character analysis video, I made the same mistake that Kawaii did as she projects her victimized mindset onto Nishimiya. By perceiving herself onto Nishimiya as she consoles her, we get a look into Kawhi's inner psyche as we realize that while most people choose to deal with the adversity in life by developing and improving themselves, Kawhi chooses to handle it through self-acceptance as she moves through life loving even her faults. Since Kawhi is surrounded by a cast that acknowledges their mistakes and in return struggles towards self-improvement and redemption, this self-acceptance may not be very endearing to an audience, especially considering it contributes to the vanity found within her narcissistic personality. Yet at the same time, there's a strange eloquence in this realistic outcome that makes it a fine point on which to end Kawhi's character arc. After all, Kawhi's personality doesn't allow for her to ever truly accept any of her wrongdoings, or to realize how much she hurt those around her, and thus from the beginning she was a character that was simply incapable of change. Kawaii was arguably the least guilty in regards to the original bullying of Nishimiya, yet her flawed personality refused to allow her to accept the past for what it was. As such, her character suffers not from the mistakes she made in the past, but rather from how she continuously causes those around her to suffer for it throughout the series. Kawaii's personality strongly resembles that of a covert narcissist, and as such her primary concern is in her appearance and how others perceive her. She has a self-absorbed sense of superiority that causes her to victimize herself through the reprimanding of others, and she doesn't handle criticism very well. She's a master of manipulation as she always tries to make others feel at fault while never taking any blame for herself. She also displays her own negative feelings onto others, and by doing so not only hurts them, but displays an inability to ever truly empathize with them. I find Kawaii to be a very realistic character, as I personally know people that are actually a lot like her. Yet despite how well written and consistent her character was, I find myself disgusted by her, and as such I hope that this video didn't seem too biased, as I'd like to hear what y'all think about her down in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, and Anime Dude out.